Air sealing is the most critical component of our weatherization work. The majority of this work will occur in the attic. You really have to look around for the areas that need to be air sealed. You'll oftentimes have to move the client's possessions, move pieces of furniture, and pull back insulation. A good tip that I've come up with over the years is to inspect insulation for dirt. If you see dirt in your fiberglass insulation, this means you have some air sealing to do in that area. Caulk and foam can be used to air seal attic areas. When you're dealing with a gap larger than an eighth of an inch in width, it's preferable to use expanding foam. There's both one part and two part expanding foams that can be used. I like one part expanding foam because it's less expensive and more convenient. It's important to bridge over large openings as you see here in air sealing the soil stack. You will want to foam around the existing perimeter. Air seal large openings with insulation board and foam around the perimeter. Note the electrical wires that travel down the wall cavity here. They should be sealed as well. We make energy lids out of foam and adhesive so that we can properly air seal and insulate recessed lights. You want to make sure there's a minimum of three inches of clearance to offset heat buildup and avoid throwing a thermal switch. It's important to uncover and seal wall tops of a home. Wire penetrations as well as accesses to the return duct system are important components of this air sealing. When air sealing an attic it's really important that you know what you're foaming as not to have foam enter into the living space of the client. Pay particular attention around ceiling fans, bath fans, and electrical fixtures. If you do end up dripping foam down through to the floor let it dry. It's far easier to remove when it's dry than when it's wet.